Okay guys, this is a quick video to show you how to change an air pressure switch on a Worcester CDI series combi boiler, which is failing to ignite. So the second stage isn't happening, so the flame doesn't ignite. So as you're aware, it's a three stage process. But in this video, I will show you how to change the air pressure switch, also known as the APS. So this is the boiler, first of all, you remove the outer cover, which is quite simple. You just lift here and pull. So quite simply, using both hands, grab either side and lift and pull towards you. So just grab the recess here with your fingers, lift and pull towards you. So once off, it looks like this. So you've got the panel, control panel here, and the APS, the air pressure switch, is this thing here. So this is what you need to change. And it's connected by two electrical contacts and then two rubber pipes. But to access it, you need to remove the two screws holding the front panel, one screw here and one screw hidden over there. So we'll do this now. So you need a Phillips, crosshead screwdriver so there we go it fits in nicely so once you've removed the front panel which sort of just flips down so you after removing the two screws there and in the corner there the panel just flips down and you'll find various components the pump there the expansion tank is at the back there you've got the heat exchanger and then this here, this complete white circle, is the air pressure switch, which has two pipes, breather pipes. So we need to disconnect those. And then it's held by this bracket. The screws holding this to the bracket are from behind. So it will be difficult to actually access the screws holding the switch. In order to get to the switch, we need to remove these pipes, this one here, and the second one, which you can remove at a later stage. So that one there, the bracket is held on by two screws, one here and one hidden behind this pipe, but it's easily accessible. So again, you need a Phillips crosshead screwdriver to access these two screws to remove the bracket holding the air pressure switch. So what we'll do now is remove the bracket and I'll show you the next stage. Once you've removed the two retaining screws from the bracket, you can then reach up and grab this red pipe, and which comes away easily. So there we go, it's disconnected. And then the switch comes away quite easily. So there we go. So it's very easy to remove. So as you can see, there are further screws which are holding the air pressure switch to the bracket. And those are smaller hex key screws, uh, which will require a small torque key or um, an Allen key to remove, but we'll do that next. At the front, you still got two electrical wires holding it to the bracket. So the next we'll do is just pull these off very easily, just making sure we know which one goes where. So on this particular one, the wires cross. So the bottom wire is connecting to the top plug. And then obviously the one remaining wire is holding the second plug. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and remove those two plugs. So we've now removed the air pressure switch. So you can see in, in there, that's where it fits with the bracket, the two pipes and the two wires. So once removed, it's looking like this. So what we now need to do is remove um, the switch from the bracket. Again, it's got the hex key or torque bolts what we'll do now is we'll remove them i mean if you don't have an allen key or um, a torque bit you can perhaps manipulate it <clears throat> with a, um, a a small phillips screwdriver so guys what we've done now is we removed the two small screws at the back of the switch holding it to the bracket so there are these size if you can see that normally there are a torque screw or um, a, a hex 
screw, I, I don't know. Uh, no, they're normally um, a small screw. There you go. You can see that in focus now. You can use either a small Allen key or um, a torque bit. But alternatively, you can use a small Phillips um, screwdriver as well. So, I mean, if you can see this clearly, this size pointy at the at the apex this will actually do as do the job as well so that's a good one to have if you don't have um, a torque bit or an allen key so there we go so it's away so it's only made of plastic so it's no use that can be thrown away so now what we'll do is we'll do the reverse of that process and fit the new one so this is the new one it's exactly the same uh, what we'll do, we'll take it out of the packet and give you a closer look. So guys, this is the new air pressure switch. As you can see, if I turn it around, there are your part numbers. And this it's exactly the same as the one we took off. So this is the one we took off. So side by side, you can see they're identical, which they should be given that the original part flip them over the connections are identical so the new one is also supplied with an extra set of screws if you lose the originals then you know you have a backup if not you can you re reuse the original ones and keep these as spare but what we'll do now is we'll do the reverse of what we did so we'll fit this to the bracket first move the old one out of the way so again the bracket so it goes up, it goes on this way. So you've got the two other screws on the right hand side, which will fix to the boiler. Going back to the boiler. So that will fit behind this pipe here in those two holes. We line it up correctly. So this one then fits like this. So you can adjust it because it's got multi holes. You can adjust it to best fit so that will fit something like that on the bracket. So we'll go ahead and fix it to the bracket now. So guys, as you can see, the bracket, which goes onto the boiler and holds the air pressure switch, has four holes. So you've got two smaller ones at the top and slightly two larger ones just below them. And it's the larger of the holes where the air pressure switch actually goes and screws into. So if we offer that up to the bracket like this, you won't see it much, but that's how it should go on. So if we just flip it over, and then I flip the bracket over, you'll see the holes, they line up something like this. It's a bit difficult to do one-handed, but um, it'll give you an idea. So there we go. So they line up like this, there we go and then the two smaller screws which you can use the fine or small phillips screw head or the uh, torque head or an allen key so those two of the smaller screws will go in like this and i will show you that next so there we go the um, two smaller screws are back screwed in and holding the new air pressure switch or the APS onto the bracket. So there we go, that's the new one. So what we'll do now is we'll offer it up to the boiler. And again, it will just slide behind to match up the screws there. So there we go. So that'll be the next job. We'll just screw that in with the two screws we took out earlier. So I will be back shortly. So there we go, the screws that we took off earlier to holding the bracket to the boiler, this one here and this one here, they're both back on. So the new APS is back into the boiler. So there we go, all secured nicely. So the two pipes we took off, they just slide back onto the back. red one, goes onto the back, if you can see that zoom in there so that's where the red one goes and then we have the white one which goes on the front so that will just come round the front of the pipe and on so just make sure 
the securely on and then we connect the wires that we took off so that so the two wires we took off I label them to the left and to the front so the first one will go on to the top one here that fits on nicely there and then the second one goes on to there and then we're ready to fire up the boiler and hopefully fingers crossed that will have solved the problem and then next stages are just to put the control panel back on so the two screw retaining screws we took off one goes there and the second one there just behind that lug so that's where the second one goes and then you put the external cover back over the combustion chamber and we're ready to go so you've just saved yourself maybe two three hundred pounds in doing a 10 minute job yourself good luck with it guys if you have trouble getting um the aps or anything else just drop me a line and i will respond with a link of where you can buy them from and that cost cost me less than 40 pounds the my labor was free and the aps which was about 38 quid so job done good luck with it guys and uh Hope you have a happy Christmas and um, not a severe winter, but you don't care now you, that your boiler works, so good luck.